<clears throat> okay, um, we are continuing on our rail of our dot pillar. Um, this is session seven. Uh, my name is Donna, my friends are he, him, I'm running the game. Uh, Mads, why don't you introduce yourself and your dot killer and maybe set our opening scene after your um, departure from the cloister. Yeah. So I'm Mads, she, they pronouns. I'm playing uh, Wall, the god killer in this playthrough. And yeah, Wall actually got scared a lot last time um, going face to face almost toe to toe with uh, the orphan maker but not having enough on them to be able to really really uh, deal with them permanently but you know took it out on the wolf's heads to be able to escape um, back at Newbridge and then realizing that the orphan maker made um, threats against uh, people that Wall knew back in the cloister. Um, she headed back home, even though she didn't really want to, and <clears throat> she caught her mentor before her mentor had been uh, left to die, um, as well as like you know wanting someone to care for uh, the little orphan child. And she performed a miracle and gave uh, her mentor Azure a few more years left. Yeah. And um, I think she has left the cloister after making sure that they're going to take precautions. She warned them against being anywhere near Junal, who serves, seems to be serving the Orphan Maker now in her madness. And um, she has left the cloister again, knowing that she needs to find answers regarding the Wolf's Head, regarding the Orphan Maker, and she's not sure exactly what to do but I mean she can't stay where Nara and Azure are going to be put into further danger um, she tried to get them to leave but they wouldn't go or at least Azure wouldn't and um, I think that's where we see Wall on the road with this furrowed brow of worry as she trudges along, she's found a new Rowan walking stick to use. She's gathered up some uh, newer robes um, to wear for traveling again. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think maybe since she is here near the cloister, I think she is going to call upon the voice of the cave. Maybe head towards that shrine the cave shrine that uh, she knows pretty well to see if she can get like more guidance than before. Yeah. Um, so yeah, why don't we set the scene a little bit because I think when we started out, I can't remember the exact details. I think there was a hint that this was like underground not just a simple cave in the side of a <laughs> mountain but but something you know underground i cannot remember if it was underneath the cloister directly but maybe a labyrinth of tunnels connects mm -hmm. it or something like this but yeah. um now that we're setting foot inside this cave what do you where do you think exactly it is how do you think we see wall enter I think it's early morning. 
you know, after having a fitful sleep, nap, yeah, gathering robes, like getting cleaned up and then finding another walking stick, just, it's a point of security. It's not like it's doing anything really. She just realizes it's just something that reminds her of here. And um, she just tries to make sure that, Na uh, that Nara and uh, Azure are safer before she heads out from the cloister, maybe behind, out into the woods. And she finds that little cave entrance. It's not, it's not very obvious. It's not very big. It's just kind of like a, 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 a hole in a hollow, like um, a mound in a hill. And she heads into the cave and it's automatically cool here, early morning, where she heard birds in the forest. Now she hears nothing as she goes deeper and deeper into these caves. It's almost like silence is stillness and stillness is the God waiting for you to speak or listening for the God's words to come. And it's very dim here. There seems to be a little bit of light. She's not sure exactly where it's coming from. Like maybe there's seams of this iridescent mold or, or um, moss because it feels soft and fuzzy underneath. And she just kind of like feels her way, but also lets her eyes get used to the dimness. And she puts one foot deliberately in front of another. And it's like one of those walking mazes where people, again, put their feet purposely down following the path of the maze until they get to a center and then maybe by the time that they've gotten there through their walk they have a question and then get to the center and then ask and then see what kind of answer they get back um so i i want to say that obviously wall has been here before you think it was just that once or you know have they returned here time after time whenever they could you know steal moments away from official duties i mean when she was more rebellious i mean like you know that were you know like tried to be more rebellious at the cloister i mean it would be one of the opportunities that she would take right she would either go into town see who she would see watch the patterns of people and then she would also go into the forest and find her way to this cave and one of those times then that's when she got the she was knocked unconscious and then she got the got all of the scri uh, scribing on her on her arm so it's she's come here before so that's why she's familiar with this and and like mm -hmm. it's almost like this ritual of finding it, walking in, hearing the sounds and not hearing sounds, and then making her way to the center. And she's hoping that this will be one of the times where the god will speak back. Um, yeah, so g given what we know about the voice of the cave, I wonder if there is something like... Maybe this caught you the second time that you came here, that the path is not the same every time. You know, there's something shifting about this labyrinth. Um, and you're not sure, you know, have never been sure if it's like some kind of physical manifestation or just an illusion. Or maybe down here in the God's Domain, what's the difference? Um, I think, I guess what goes through your head, you know, what do you feel when you kind of unlock the key to get along the right path? You know, uh, how does, what sensation do you have as your power kind of, or your relationship with this place, uh, sees you safely through to, to its center?
before it was just more of the five senses with some senses less able to cope than others so she knows she could not depend completely on sight so she had to work on her hearing listening and touch because of feeling through the walls and even though it seems to be shifting every single time that she's been there always seemed to be a familiarity with how certain passages felt when they felt right she can't explain it it's something within her within her stomach down deep in a soul you know she would never have thought to really think about that but it's different now because now there's like a taste to the air there's a tang to the smell of this so there's more things engaged here than before and now it just feels right when she gets closer and closer where there's like a hum or a feeling of fullness as opposed to being empty yeah you're on mute thank you um so when you when you feel when you feel the voice's presence, do you, how do you open this prayer up or do you always wait for it to speak? used to be where she would just kind of treat it very familiarly she would murmur or mutter to herself as she made her way down but for her, <laughs> I think for many reasons when she does it today this morning time has no meaning but she also knows that she has to be a lot more respectful just because of everything that she has seen and experienced so far so instead of an actual talking that she's doing as if she's got a friend next to her or, or, or just talking to a superior, it's more of a, she feels herself some kind of cup and her cup fills with questions, questions that she's not putting into words, but just kind of feelings and images that she's holding close to her heart. So she's not speaking. She's trying very hard not to speak. So this way she can listen better. And she's just filling her heart and her, like her center with these questions of what do I do? Where do I go? After everything that has happened, I don't want anyone else close to me to be hurt. Help me or help me to help myself to do this I am but one person but I need to do something I can't let these wolf's head do the orphan makers bidding and I cannot let the orphan maker hurt anyone else that I could care about or that other people care about And for some reason, the last image that she has before she feels that she's reached the center of the cave, of the cave maze, is something about the north. Only knows it by reputation and only what she imagines from her reading, her illustrations, uh, transcribing, and perhaps even Tiresias' tales, who knows, but... Yeah, that last image comes unbidden in her head and she doesn't remember why. Yeah. 
So, yeah, I think you feel the presence of the voice behind you. Um, almost as if... Almost like a sense of playfulness in that it knows, obviously, that you can sense it and see through some of these illusions, these gatekeeping illusions. And I think some of the the markings on your skin flare up. And maybe maybe the pattern is dancing, maybe there is like some element of communication in this. But it says You really think I can help you kill a god? Wordlessly. And not speaking, but she lets her heart, her centers, try to convey, not kill, if I don't have to, but no, their weakness balance out all the pain that they've caused. Maybe she even has the image of balanced scales in her head, even though she probably knows that's not necessarily how it works. But that's the image that she holds as about as close to what she wants as possible. And just waits to see if she can hear or feel what the answer is. And it prompts you to take the path that you have never taken. And I think it says, now and once you leave this place, And you can, again, I, I think like on the archway above one of the many entrances or exits from this place, the, the writing lights up. Um, there is an offering here, an offering that will help you if you are brave enough, take us. She kind of laughs a little to herself and says, and thinks, oh, I don't know about brave, but maybe smarter fool than I was when I started <laughs> and she'll go through the archway and I think here there is a a winding catacomb 
first Gresh, you know, people whose, whose remains have been interred here recently. And the dancing script leads you deeper and deeper until you come to old remains. And it settles in this place where everything is dust, except for a few. And there is one where, well, I think you can, you can tell that the voice is compelling you to take a closer look. What, uh, what do you think you're afraid of or how do you think we can see Wall's nervousness as she reaches to this alcove? Is there unseen light here? Or torches um, that are lit? Something? Yeah. I mean, I think the only thing lighting up this place, like, I think that iridescent moss, like, all the other light sources have slowly died. Like no one has trod here in quite a while. The only thing lighting this place up is the the script on your arm, the script across the archway. Maybe there's script around the alcove in question. Yeah, I think that's uh, <clears throat> probably the most frightening of all because the scripts should make sense but you know she was just looking at them like she normally would they don't necessarily put together make any sense whatsoever they just she just knows that script near script grows brighter and feels warm to the touch so as she's making her way, she's still placing her feet quite purposefully on the ground in case it collapses or she steps on something uncertain or she's not sure what she's stepping in. So even more so careful because she can't, she doesn't feel like she can afford to be careless and her hand will reach for that alcove and try to make sense of what she sees is it almost yeah. like a dream where she can't quite read it i think it's like that kind of out of focus in your peripheral vision and when you turn you know it blurs in a different way you know it's like you can't quite focus on this mm -hmm. um but you reach inside and you I think, you know, when you reach inside, maybe there's like a cloth or something that, that crumbles as soon as you touch it, but your hand grasps something firm, something cold, something gold. And you can see, I mean, in this kind of almost terrifying flash you can see the orphan maker staring at you out of this alcove uh, her stomach drops immediately and i think she almost drops what she finds in the alcove at that feeling like seeing the flash of their eyes behind mm. that scary mask um what did she take yeah and it's it's strange it's not a skull but it looks like it's fashioned out of bone and it's fashioned into the shape of a horse's skull like like a chamfron you know the kind of horse face armor mm. 
Yes. Um, so very stylized, very macabre, very reminiscent of the Orphan Maker. Does it have eye holes? Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I think it has th that kind of like what looks like a, a mixture between like the the armored protection for eyes, but you know, who knows? That those could be the eye holes, right? It depends how 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 much of this is artifice and how much is natural, right? Is it about the size of a horse's head, or is it much bigger? I think it's the size of a horse's head. I want to say she acts impulsively, but I'm not sure exactly <laughs> what this means, especially here. Um, she wants to. She's gonna put the. She's gonna put the 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 mask on okay. so she's going to try I, I to see that, through it yeah that seems impulsive to me uh yeah. or do you think this is tempting fate i don't know if you have oh, like a specific goal see. involved um like the okay hold on but just say what perilous feet it's i'm not sure if it's perilous i mean it would be your determination right yeah. because i mean like you know her first thought upon seeing this after being scared of course is offering that will help and then she will actually speak out loud in this dusty old empty place empty of life at least she'll say will this help me to see as they see and this is where she will put on the mask like so her her mood or whatever is questioning it's like just a sense of a sense of not desperation, I mean, but just yeah. de well, maybe desperate for answers. Maybe that's what it yeah. is. Maybe that's what it is. Is so, it like I mean that seems like kind kind of a, a desperate hope, right? That yeah. this is the key. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that is like a like a desperate hope that maybe doing this will give her a key, like you know, give like an idea of how mm -hmm. the orphan maker thinks. So she can like you know find their weakness. I mean, yeah, anything, everything. I mean, like you know, says have, you know, voice of the cave said, gotta take the path not like ne not never taken. Well, I mean, it's not sh like not like she goes around you know putting on god masks and everything. So that 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 seems pretty off the beam for her. Was that um, not in your calendar for Tuesdays, right? <laughs> yeah right i mean like it's it's like you know for for even tide on on the next on the next tuesday after that <laughs> yeah so uh i'll tell you something you didn't notice until now um which which one of these two do you want to answer the advantage or the trouble i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> um uh, maybe the trouble is that it does work whether it's because of it truly is an avatar or a reasonable facsimile of the orphan makers mask themselves or it's because she's willing it to be so not sure but i think the trouble that hits hits her hard and fast and you can tell me if this is too much um, I think <clears throat> it's a lot, right? It's a lot to consider a human mind taking in the capacity of a god's thoughts, especially if someone has, if, if a god has been long, long lived or long standing or something, and the cradle has gotten, gotten loose. So I feel like, hold on, let me just double check something. see what i'm trying to see here um you think it's almost something like 
you, you feel, you know, in that kind of classic when you stare into the abyss way, right? You feel like you're embodying some of the things you hate about the orphan mm. maker. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I feel like the first thing that she sees is a child. There's a child there reaching out for someone in front of them, but with tears, desperate crying, like, no, don't leave me, don't, don't, and, and, like, this whole idea of being carried away, and then flames and blood splashing across the mask, and then more children, um, who are slumped in the foreground over bodies that could just as easily be parents or guardians. And then just a swath of something like, not like pestilences, swarms or anything like that, but something quite similar and more human, which is even worse. I think it's like this whole idea of, of this mass of humanity out to just make orphans just like them to make more army to make more like them and just on and on and on and this being behind the mask being happy about it because parents that are showing the love of their children are doing with such fervor that they are defending those children up until their very end and that is what this being lives for and just taking it away at the very height of its of its rise and yeah and it makes her sick <laughs> it's like she's brought down to her knees and further like she's sprawled on the ground seeing this and she's almost unable to she's almost unable to take the mask off because it's just so overwhelming i mean her head throbs her body feels like it's being beat down just by the emotions of all these children and these parents and these vicious this vicious army and it's all and it's one and it's all again yeah um i think in this kind of painful revelation this kind of this sense of ongoing eternal tragedy that you can't tear your eyes away from, you get some kind of inkling as to the orphan maker's birth when they became this god. And maybe it's Maybe it's a sense of old imprisonment, of, of parental betrayal. The orphan maker was treated like a pawn. some kind of like the equivalent of a of a grain of sand and an oyster that has grown into this terrible pearl pushed to an extreme response pushed like beyond any kind of reason I 
Right, mum. That's my advantage. Before she goes completely mad <laughs> <laughs> with this pain and just tragedy and. So I think, yeah, you can you can tear this mask off at some stage to spare yourself. Maybe it'll be easier next time. I think the voice is quiet. The only, the only voice you can hear now in this cave is the echo of your own. I think as she wrestles the mask off, comes back to herself, hearing her own panting, her hollow chest trying to gasp and get more breath back from what she's seen, feeling her head throb with the weight of all that feeling and despair and violence and victory, grim victory. But then also those little dots of the parental love that was shining so bright before it was cut down and the child's hopes being dashed. I think when that all culminates in into Wall as she comes back to herself, I think all she can do in that moment is scream. And it echoes throughout the cave. And then in her scream, she's also crying. She's sobbing. Because I think she remembers now. I think she remembers a bit. She came from the north. Her parents. Her parents didn't die in war. Her parents left her, abandoned her. And in that moment when she felt that emptiness of being left I think she's felt the closest to Orphan Maker than she thought she ever would. Perhaps she feels just a pers just a tiny micro second of that hate that the Orphan Maker feels or felt, maybe still feels. And she knows what that feels like because of what she remembers. I think that's a good place to take our break. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so. That's when, when we see Wall exit the cave, maybe, you know, a bulge in her traveling bag to show her, we call it loot, uh, relic, you know? Yeah. Um, 
where where do we see her feet take her uh, westwards to that destination that was put in her mind previously, the City of Towers, or yeah. northwards hmm. to her ancestral home? If I recall correctly, I think... Was it the wolf's head's plan before um, Wall stumbled, you know, into facing the orphan maker that they were saying that they, that their plan was to move northward once they finished the westward or they were done with the westward expansion and then now uh, they would be heading north now? Yeah, I mean, I think it was... was for discussion right mm -hmm. um whether that was a discussion which was heavily favoring that seemed to be the case but given given your actions in newbridge who knows whether they would be taking that on with the same uh with any urgency so but yeah that seemed to have been now they said the north northwards the north uh of course, if you were hopeful, you might say, oh, well, that doesn't necessarily mean uh, where I'm from. But the, the rule of drama dictates that it is exactly in the same north, right? Um, There's only one north, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, we, we say that in conservation of, conservation of uh, characters and drama and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, so I, I guess the question is, uh, do you feel like you have to protect these people, given how some of them at least gave you up? They gave me up. Not the whole people, I don't think. She doesn't know who they were, necessarily. I mean, it's just... I think... She would want to head them off. I mean, maybe, maybe she can't beat their westward expansion or something like that, but maybe she can find a way to get people to fight. I mean, she's no inspiring war leader or anything like that, but I mean, I don't know. Her biggest problem is trying to figure out whether she's supposed to give out the warning or if she's supposed to stop them outright. Given what she can do and it's still strange to her it's like you know why her what what's and is it only well gods she questions her role right now I mean it just seems so insane that she needs to do this although I mean the voice from the cave did say she needs to 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 take the path she's never taken before is that the path back to the north or is that to the west that's the question oh man Wait a minute, are you saying that what when when oracles tell you what to do it's always and should be entirely clear oh i mean she's probably hearing dog tooth like you know say that like out loud in her yeah. head and she just laughs it's like no no she's talking to herself in the middle of this this pathway per se um 
Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what this would be here. I mean, are you looking for guidance? Right? Yeah. Or... Yeah, but I mean, it feels it feels rather rather like greedy to try and you know get back or, on the road and or if you're of a mind to f follow literally the voices um, uh, advice, <laughs> are you doing as you're told? Ooh. Uh, yeah, because I feel like the voice of the cave has been quite benign in comparison to all the other bullshit that she's been she's been dealing with. Um, she's felt comforted when she's been guided by the voice of the cave. I think so. How you show submission. I mean, maybe it's just that, right? I mean, maybe it's... She's talking to herself. Like, maybe she'll go over to a nearby tree at this, you know, branching of the path, per se. And she'll kind of just, like, lean back against it, looking at, like, the different ways to go, literally and f figuratively, and just say, like, kind of lean her head back and go, I know I should take the path I've never taken before. But... <laughs> Does that mean going to the north and trying to rally where I've never actually been? I just know I was abandoned by them by people from the north? Or does that mean going westward where I've never traversed before and see if I can catch up to the wolf's head and take care of the orphan maker before before the wolf's head complete their goal and move north? Like as she leans against the tree, she kind of just like slumps and then comes down to her knees and say, it would be easier to do what I can when I know what I can do. And without really thinking about it, she'll look, to, look up to the sky as if she's going to find an answer there. I don't know, and that's the scariest thing of all. I don't know how to decide. And maybe you think me weak in that way, but I just need a sign. So answering what vulnerability do you reveal? Um, and so, just so I'm clear, when you're when you're doing as you're told, you you th you want to be like prompted to go westwards, right? Because you have never been along this road, right? Or to like you know help make the decision, like you know, is it north? That would be the best course of action. Because she's never, you know, she was abandoned by people from the north, but maybe doesn't remember actually being there. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah, I mean, so. Does she go west or does she go north? Yeah, because I, I guess if you're doing as you're told, it's like definitely westwards. So I just want to make sure that, like, you're so you kind of already know the answer right when you're when you do as you're told you're just following there 
um, and getting some reward for being a, I guess, submissive subject or, or however we want to put it. Yeah. I mean, maybe yeah. she's pointing in the direction of West, but again, she just wants to be sure that that's what, that was the, that was the goal. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think, uh, I think, yeah, you hear, you hear a voice from behind you, and for once, it's like a 100% human voice behind you, right? Um, uh, hey, Wall, are you not sure where you're going? Or are you always talking to trees nowadays? Seems like a, uh, a bit of a <clears throat> departure for you, you know? And I think it's uh, it's Tiresias, uh, who is leading the uh, wagons, you know, full of various goods. Is is he on horseback, or is he on the wagon, or? Uh, I think he is on horseback, uh, kind of in front of this wagon trail. I think, you know, when she hears him and then whips around and then sees him, I think she will run to his, to his, uh, to the horse's side, you know, where she can look up at him and just, I don't think many people have seen this kind of face from Wall before. This is an eager face. This is a pleased face. This is a face of someone who didn't realize that she was missing her friend until she saw him and she's like literally at his at his foot and just like Teresius is that you <laughs> um yeah and he he jumps down off the horse and uh, embraces you and says of course it's me what kind of a stupefying question is that she Where will give been? him such a big hug, like, you know, as he's, as he's like, you know, being so, you know, so honest and there, you know, so grounding. She's just going to just, she's going to give him such a tight hug that he's probably going to hitch in his breath. It's like, huh. it is so good to see you. And she's like saying that against his against his chest. I'm like I can't remember exactly how how tall I said he was, but yeah, I mean she just says that against his chest, and just like so glad to see him. I, I've had I've had a few adventures, I guess. And she'll hear he'll hear her sob a little bit into his chest. Hey, hey. Uh, you. You heading home, or you really heading west, like you just told that uh, elm tree? <laughs> and she gives him another big hug, and he's probably like looking down at her, like, "What the hell is going on?" But uh, yes, yes, I'm, 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 I'm heading west. I, uh, I was already home. There's a hesitation when she says home, but I mean it's. She understands what he means. Uh -huh. And she'll say, uh, can I, I'm sorry, I mean, if you're working, can I come with you? I mean, I, I have so much to tell you. You, you probably won't even believe it, but yes, I'm, I'm going west. Sure. Well, um, yeah, so I think, uh, you walk, he just leads the horse. You know, it's not like the, uh, the wagons are going to overtake you even at a walking pace. So, yeah, uh, we're heading west. There's uh, things to sell. Uh, no adventures, but uh, yeah, but uh, how, how's everyone? At home? She doesn't look at him. 
when she says, some are fine, others aren't. Yeah, we got a we got a warning to not go through the cloister this time. That's probably for the best. Um, Junal's not doing well. They may have to. They may have to isolate her soon, if they haven't already. I mean, not doing well? Like, crazier than usual? She killed someone. Someone's, maybe. Teresius. Hmm. And she, uh... She tried to kill someone else. At the cloister. So... I don't know if you were there when the pestilence had come near the cloister, but uh, I ran, and um, I've seen things. <laughs> All those stories that you were telling me from the from visiting, I don't I. I think I have stories of my own to tell that uh, might be just as interesting. Well, uh, yeah, let's let's hear this. We got a long road ahead. Yeah, I think she's going to uh, trying to decide whether this is to feel someone out or a connect with someone I'm trying to feel like if there's anything um yeah i mean i guess it depends like so in terms of i guess we could call it reconnecting with Teresa's. Mm. i guess yeah. it 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 matters whether you feel like you can just open up directly with him or whether you want to, you know, feel out how they might react to, to this, um, to all the news that you might tell him. Right. Right. So it dep depends how, for me, it depends like how confident wall is in their friendship. Um, or, or in the power of this new new thing to break that friendship. Hmm. I feel like she's going to start to tell her tale in a linear fashion. Like from leaving the cloister when she ran and then when she ran and when she came upon little slaughter and what she thought. Because at that point she thought it was like, oh, it was something with her, something with her Rowan staff that she's like, you know, like, uh, like the, the second of which that she's waving in the waving as she's as she's walking and um you know then she'll say to Teresius but i'm coming to find out that that's not the whole story i have you've told me some fantastic things Teresius and now i'm going to tell you I have met gods in my short journeys away from here. 
And I have been challenged. I have been, <laughs> I suppose, there's been an attempt at appeal and seduction, I suppose, thinking back on it. And I've been shown things by other gods that seem to be more down to earth. I just don't know. Having been in the cloister so long. And then she's describing like all of the, all of the um, things that she's seen with the wolf's head. I don't know if you've seen them cut a swath through the lands that you've been traveling. But I don't think I can let that go. Now that this doesn't even seem, now that the cloister doesn't even seem like home anymore, I don't feel I can just stand by and see the world when the world is being torn down by these people that are being led by a god that feeds off of their off of their violence very specific violence do you know could you even understand I know you've always told me that I should be leaving the cloister. I mean, that they, they really don't have a hold on me as they did when I was a child. And that I should see more of the world. But am I still being sheltered by thinking that I should do something about it? So, I mean, she's trying to give him, like, what she's thinking, and she yeah. wouldn't necessarily do this with anyone else. He's the closest thing that she has to an actual friend. Mm -hmm. Every time that they get together, it's not a, it's not of a, oh, let's go back into, like, reintroducing ourselves to each other again. It's more of a... Let's pick up where we left off. Yeah. And that's kind of what she's doing here. Um, yeah, and I think he gets this. Usually, I guess for the most part, when you meet up and tell tales, it's, you know, at a remove, right? These are, mm -hmm. um, you know, Grand tales of marvelous sights and blowing off steam and something that's not quite as grimy as you realize the outside world is now. And Teresia says, yeah, you're right. Out, out here, I mean, sometimes I see terrible things and Sometimes I can't do anything about it. Most of the time I can't do anything about it. I just tell myself, if I don't do this, you know, people don't get what they need. Even though I know sometimes the powers that be, or even the the anarchs that be, will uh, turn it all to dust. And yet but I don't know do what it. else I can do. So you still do it. I mean, I'm out in the road and hope it gets better. But 
I mean, call myself a coward when I don't lift a finger to help people. Yeah, I still do it. But if you could do what I think I can do, would you do something about all of that? I mean, I'm, I'm not entirely sure I understand what it is you think you can do. Like, you think you kill the god because, like, you kill the god? You think you can do it again? I've done it three times. I've channeled things. I didn't think I could. I have to try. I mean, we're all mortal, right? If I at least stand up for what I believe is true, what I believe is right, and I die trying, then it's worth something. As opposed to standing by, I guess not doing anything. And she shakes herself out of it <clears throat> a little bit and says, I mean, it doesn't, I don't, I don't know what I would do. I mean, I, I guess I would have to, right? Like, no one else can do this. Yeah, I don't think so. And, right. Yeah, I just don't think anyone else can, at least not that I've seen. And... feel responsible. I felt responsible. I mean, I didn't have to tell the people in Newbridge what their toll was really taking when I saw the devil underneath. But I did. And I I took him out, but then the wolf's bane moved in. It's like they always move in. What is that that I read? Nature abhors a vacuum. It won't allow anything to just sit and see what happens. Something else is going to move in and try and take over and be dominant. This isn't the fairy tales that I've read or copied anymore. I mean, look, there's definitely some gods out there who are who are still good who answer yes. prayers and try to help but the rest of them are just tearing this world apart or helping humans tear it apart uh, I'm not sure I see the difference between a god doing something through their worshippers or doing it with her own bare hands. But... 
I mean, most people just pray and hope, right? Because what else can they do? Do you pray and hope? Now, sometimes I don't even know who I'm praying to. <laughs> Little extra drama. I'm going to use the Vagabond question. Uh -huh. What aren't they telling me? If anything, Ooh. I mean... <laughs> Hopefully I'm not wasting this question because it's such a great one. <laughs> and uh, who better to ask than my best, like one of my best friends <laughs> or my yeah. only friend, who knows? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I mean, I think when you mention the wolf's head, there's this little moment of like panic and fear. Like it's not just a name that he has heard of. And I think you see, like, you know, when he, when he says, you kind of just lower your eyes and try to not be noticed, or you try not to, um, you you don't interfere because you'll end up dead in a ditch. I think that is specifically about the wolf's head. You know, there's something, there's some kind of sense of shame of, uh, I don't know, some, some, something in between collaboration and, you know, just being a bystander, right? Hmm. Maybe she sees a little bit of that and she just kind of tamps that down real quick because she's still very, very glad to see him. If she feels anything about it, maybe she'll think about it tomorrow. But not right now. Mm -hmm. So... Look at this slow rolling carriage train. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, heading heading westwards. Um So there is a pilgrim's trail on the map uh, in between here and the city of towers. Uh, somewhere, maybe, um, you see pilgrims, or maybe at this stage it's actually more like refugees. People trying to uh, get to the City of Towers. Somewhere that is safe, at least in that it's not being ransacked or raided or anything like that by the wolf's head. She'll ask Teresius, is that what it's called? Is it called the City of Towers? The old name in honor of the god was expunged i mean i think it has an official name but we all just call it the city of towers i mean i hope they're right i hope it does prove to be a place of refuge but there's Places where you can take shelter 
from a storm and it's temporary and then there are places of true sanctuary which probably need to be a lot more remote than a city of floating towers so I guess we'll see is that where you're headed or are you is that on the way to where you're going where we're headed but yeah that's where he we're headed some of the way at least um yeah so i think like as you are on this trail there are i think roadside shrines that people have been leaving offerings at um some are more popular than others any any god promising safe passage or anything of that nature um is heavily subscribed to <laughs> um but i think there is also people leaving offerings at gods to to the lost your people have been separated on the road or before on the road uh, people just want to know yeah. do you think you want to leave an offering or talk to anyone at any of these shrines yeah I think if she sees whoops if she sees one that looks like it is an offering to if she sees one that looks like it's an offering to um on the way home maybe hold on uh yeah to the way home maybe she'd be curious enough to come by there and maybe she digs out a small candle or a, like a a stick of incense or something and light it with the uh, with the little taper that's nearby mm -hmm. and uh, yeah just like you know make that as an offering to the way home for not for herself but for others that are you know seeking safe passage or just safe safety and security to get back to wherever they're going she keeps it that general um, is it one of the popular ones or is it one of the ones that is like a lot of folks are just kind of uh, you know passing it off as just eh yeah I mean I think probably people are looking for more hope than they think they can find in their home you know they're on the road for a reason and they're they're leaving home not going home right uh maybe maybe a few i don't know uh more forward looking or more optimistic people are praying that they'll be able to return home yeah i think that's maybe that's that's what i sense there are families maybe that are just keeping together and making their little offering to have safety eventually when they can return I 
Um, yeah, and I think at at some stage this trail. Um, I think there's a safer way north or south, but the way these pilgrims want to go is the direct route to the city. And this is, there's this, I don't know, we, we see this giant cliff face, um, you know, across the valley from the city and you know there's this steep staircase hewn into the cliff to to walk down and uh, yeah i think you know many many are going down that way and and many who's uh who are i don't know with the young or with the infirm are making a choice to go the longer way. Even if it's, even if safety is within sight, this, this stair, um, stairway is, is not for them. Right. They can't be serious. She's saying to Tiresias, it's like, The most direct way is not always the best way for everyone. We're going to have to go around, right? Because can't obviously can't take the, the carts down here. Uh, obviously not, but um, they've obviously done this before. And... They, Theseus stands up on a wagon and basically starts offering money or goods for people to bring down sacks or barrels or boxes or whatever it is. And the wagons will turn back. And Theseus says, hey, they're going to have money in their pockets when they enter the city. And we'll get our stuff there. Seems like a good arrangement. A win-win for everyone. Well, a, uh, a not-lose, not-lose, let's call it. <laughs> okay. And you've gone down these stairs before yourself? Yeah. Okay. First time, scary as fuck. <laughs> and uh, so far, uh, number 17, still scary as fuck. Any tips? Usually they say don't look down, but um, I'm not sure you have much choice. Just, you know, keep an eye on your feet and uh, don't think about how many more steps you have to go. Okay. And uh, yeah, she'll start along right after him. You know, after he's gotten all of his goods, you know, Parshened off to folks to bring it down for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. She'll follow. Um, yeah, I mean, I wonder... Obviously, you know, there's... There's the to tower and the cloister that you've been. There's the stairs in the labyrinth that you've been. But all of those have a very definite end in sight. Whereas <laughs> this one seems to go on forever. Um, it's a long way down. It's a long way down, yeah. How do you think Wall approaches this problem? Uh, is this is this something like she focuses on maybe as Theresia says, or does she find some other mechanism in her, her mind to do it? 
I mean, how wide is the is the stair? Is it only for one person across and barely that? Yeah, I think it's pretty much one person across. I think. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, who would want to take the risk of, you know, the accidental jostle that sends you off the steps? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, pretty much one across. Um, oh, Yeah, I think. Yeah, th this stair staircase is nothing. Yeah, I mean, or I should say, it's it's like anything that she's seen up to this point is nothing compared to the staircase. Is huh. what I meant to say. Yeah. I mean, she's just kind of like, she is not looking down actually, because it's too easy to let her vision slip from her feet over to the other side. So she is going to concentrate on the wall that is next to her <laughs> keep one hand on that wall and slowly make her way down you know as as she can as possible um while having her walking stick as a kind of like you know just as a uh kind of give her some kind of not comfort per se but just feeling like okay I'm creating my own railing like you know it's just kind of mm -hmm. like it makes its way one step at a time as she does like on one side while she keeps her hand on the wall on the other side and such so yeah she's focusing yeah I mean I think it. Um, yeah. it's so long that obviously not every section of this was built by the same people maybe it mm -hmm. like took generations to build and carve out and like you i think in some places you have this very comforting actual wall that you can like you could sit down on like to rest and whatever and sometimes they've just left the natural cliff side alongside it and then sometimes just because they need to go in a relatively straight line there's nothing it's like the, the void one side or the other uh, so yeah I think a stick the the walking stick you know uh, probably a, a, a stalwart for every pilgrim right <laughs> for, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. one reason or another but definitely worth it um, yeah when like kind of, if... when it kind of opens up as a void like on both sides it's like she keeps her eyes straight forward <laughs> Uh -huh. You know, just kind of like, okay, and like slowly ascending. All right, got this, got this. All right, got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Is this something where... There's something here? Like what do you recognizing, mean? Like recognizing God or anything? I'm just asking. I mean, like, I'm not saying I would, but if there's a possibility here of um, something being here. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe. I mean, it doesn't have to be. I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's an interesting, an interesting question. Um... Um, I mean, I would I would hate to see an overkill roll on this. <laughs> I know. If your divinity is actively trespassing against them. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to. Yeah, yeah. And actually, it's like you know, I think it's right now it's dormant because it's like I used it up for the for the miracle manifestation. So there shouldn't uh, be anything here. Unless it's just it just keeps shining through because <laughs> there's the yeah, possibility, yeah, yeah. the potential. So. I mean, you could certainly try to recognize signs or influence of a god in this in this place. Um, I 
I mean, yeah. Unless, unless you... Like, if you think that... The, the worksmanship here, or the guiding hand here, must have been divine. I mean, in some of these stretches where there's nothing on either side, that just feels like the most reasonable explanation. I mean, like, you know, grant humans are ingenious, mm -hmm. but that it just seems this part and that part with nothing surrounding it seems even more so. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, it's kind of like those inverted stones that just seem to be balancing on just the, 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 the tiniest of points and yet they look like they're uh, uh, upside down triangles like floating yeah so. yeah um i mean I'll, I'll i'll leave it up to you if you want to reach out with your kind of divine tendrils to um i mean maybe it's recognize. just an appreciation it starts off as an appreciation for like this, this handiwork, mm -hmm. you know, but I mean like just the vistas that we're seeing, um, that seem so far and lofty from this sec from these sections that just seem mm -hmm. to be like adrift in midair before they connect back to part of the cliff or whatever that, that has, uh, you know, an attachment to a uh, cliff wall and such. I feel like, you know, that just seems like an appreciation. Yeah. And yeah. maybe that's the potential that kind of shines through. Alrighty. So let's okay. see what this looks like. So, sure. uh, uh, okay. So am I near somebody's domain? Uh, I think, I think you gotta be right. On the, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think. Would I be familiar with their gospel? I mean, again, she's pretty well read, especially for the things that she's illuminated and, and transcribed. So yeah. maybe, but she doesn't remember at the moment because taking it all in and such. Yeah, I guess when you, yeah, I guess we'll 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 point to something from their gospel with with uh, with your hit, right? Yeah, or even without. Right. And would it be bad if I didn't know? <laughs> I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, That's fine. Yeah. Plus, I mean, every, plus everyone else walking bad. down the stairway doesn't know and it's not bad for them. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, uh, so have they killed any gods two. lately? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Alrighty. We'll see. <laughs> oh. Six plus five plus two. Oh no. <laughs> what is it? Oh shit. Uh, oh, overkill. Boy. You re realize your divinity is actively trespassing against them right now, and the GM will say how. I mean, if, what's funny is the fact that, I mean, am I, am I doing the thing where I'm overcoming a dangerous obstacle with just nothing but my mortal wits or skill? <laughs> And am I awakening my divinity somehow? Well, being one of about, weird... about to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it feels um, like it. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess we lo we're looking for cliffhangers, and here we are. Here um, we are. <laughs> time for a break. Oh, oh my oh. god, amazing! <laughs> okay, we're back. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah. What we. What we see maybe is is wall um, maybe stopping for a brief moment to to run her hands along the carving of this stone, this impossible stretch, uh, and maybe recalling. Maybe something 
a pattern or a description in a book brings to mind um, the temples of Vulcan, the Black Forge. And, you know, I think, you know, we, we're used to thinking of this, or so far I've described this as this cliff into this valley, which then on the other side rises up to the city of towers. But, you know, maybe from this new perspective out on this edge of the void, you can see that this cliff runs, you know, all the way around. It's a circle, almost a perfect circle. This must be the volcano, the birthplace of Vulcan himself. And and I think, you know, as you kind of, as you stand up and like look around this kind of remember, like remembering this detail from the, from the scrolls and suddenly realizing it, you feel this shockwave like this it's like the earth has been hit with a hammer and the re reverberations through the earth almost throw you to your feet uh, and everyone else on this staircase feels it too it's not just in your imagination and there's another strike of that hammer and this time a few people fall and there's like a pause before the third strike and you, you hear a voice in your head, a voice you recognize from that village when you were starting out on your journey. How dare you? Sneak into my realm. I thought you were an ally. How? How will you prove to me that you do not come here ill? I think she... If she can, she'll go down like sprawled on the stair after that second hit and she sees her she sees those people fall and she just cries out into the void I didn't mean anything I'm here with a friend we're making our way to the city of towers I don't mean anything except to pass I don't mean any harm those people didn't mean any harm I just show want me. to get down the stairs show me shed your own blood here for me as proof that you bear me no ill will Hold on, do as I'm told. <laughs> I mean, she really doesn't um, mean anything by it. <laughs> so you could do as you're told, but also, I mean, if you wanted to, you could just mark the strain to to you know stand tall and and put yourself on the arm to shed blood somehow. 
ah. in this, you know, in this minor sacrifice or our nerve wracking sacrifice standing yeah. on the precipice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is. I mean, if that's what it takes just to get him to stop, that would be great. So, yeah, I'm, I can totally uh, mark a strain. Uh, be wounded. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think she's kind of scrabbling to find something sharp or whatever to... And actually, uh, for a little bit of drama, <laughs> I think she'll reach into her into her bag scrabbling through and I think maybe she doesn't remember or realize it in this desperate moment but she like you know scrabbles around without looking because she's afraid to look down but then she reaches in and then without realizing it it's like you know she runs her hands like right back out as she cuts herself on the mask on the relic okay okay and then she just like and then she kind of raises her arm as she stands very carefully up on shaking legs. It's like, here, here is my pledge. I don't mean any harm. Please don't hurt anyone. Don't let anyone else fall, please. And then she'll hold out her arm over the, over the edge and let it slowly drip. And I think, I mean, it takes an age for one blood drop to fall and hit the ground. Sure. But like when it does, you, like you feel this rumble is too strong a word, but this kind of, you know, like the, the sound, like when a tool is put down, when something heavy is eased into rest. And, you know, everyone else on the stairs kind of feels that too and, and knows it's safe. Some are looking up at you. Some obviously don't, don't connect the two events. But is they're obviously not hearing the God's voice in their head. Right. And but I think Teresia sees and he, you know, knowing what you've told him, knows exactly what's happened. Yeah. Or at least, you know, in broad strokes. Yeah. And he kind of raises his voice to tell everyone to start moving again. You know, nice and easy. There's no rush. It's not going to happen again. I mean, I think we were like one of the last in line. I think even. Yeah, kind of yeah. I comes think, up behind I think so. me. Yeah. I think he comes up behind me, but seeing that I'm like my arm is still like you know out over the void, and and she's and tremble and she's trembling, and you know, obviously there's only room for for one at a time. So I mean, like, what is what does he do when he sees her like kind of like stock still? Yeah, I think. You know, he maybe puts a hand on your shoulder and maybe squeezes it and, and whispers to you. Okay, I mean, not all gods are assholes, but... We just gotta take it easy till we find the one we gotta Right. 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 So for the first time on the on these steps, I mean like she closes her eyes, just enjoying for just a moment, like the feel of his hand on her shoulder, kind of trying to give some reassurance. And then she takes a deep breath, slowly makes her arm lower down, and will, almost like an automaton, like, you know, make her way slowly down the steps, just 
waiting a little bit in fear to see if Vulcan says something again mm -hmm. in that in that hammer forge kind of voice but just making her way slowly down and you know still appreciating the view but just with a little bit more reticence this time and I don't know whether you <laughs> count that as me activating my trigger <laughs> Uh, yeah. So when you become when you overcome a dangerous obstacle with nothing but your mortal wits or skills, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so we'll see if it actually comes up. I mean, obviously he sensed it, you know, and her appreciation for it, her, her, yeah, potential maybe came through, you know, like running her hand across some of the runes or what have you, and just yeah. It's now she's where she feels the, 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 the tension, right? Like she can't always assume that she can relax even in the presence of friends because depending on where she is there might be some god's domain that she crosses and then doesn't know until almost too late and yeah, yeah. well shit <laughs> you know <laughs> so yeah she just makes her way slowly down and I, maybe I mean if Teresius wants like maybe he like almost starts to take his hand away and she just kind of like turns back to the side where he had his hand and says please I'd feel better if you just kept contact. Even a little bit. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Yeah. Just... just hold on. You know. And, you know, she'll make her way down with... with you know, hopefully one of Teresa's hands like on hers, on her shoulder mm. or fingers or whatever, like, you know, whatever he decides is enough to keep her grounded to make it down the stairs finally. <laughs> yeah. However long it takes. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, and I think maybe not you given that what you know of what, what is now at the base of this um, valley, but I think everyone else, you know, is, is somewhere between like collapsing to the ground or just kneeling and kissing it when they reach yeah. the yes. bottom of the stairs, right? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Uh, I think, I think maybe like, you know, once we get down to the bottom of the bowl of, of, of this valley, I think this is where, Teresius will feel her visibly and physically slump. It's not even relax. It's just like slump because of sheer exhaustion. And she will go and lean on the nearest wall with her forehead against it and just pant and gasp for air as if like she's like run a mile, but yeah, pretty, pretty taxing. So yeah. she yeah. doesn't collapse onto her onto her feet, but I mean she just kind of like leans against the wall and just like kind of catches her breath. <sighs> we made it. We made it. <sighs> and you said you did this how many times? <sighs> uh, I guess this is 18. <sighs> Scary as fuck. Yes. Yes. If you think your legs feel like jelly now, wait till we go back up. What? Let me guess, you're going to take the long way, huh? She just, she will turn from the wall. She won't move her head from away from the wall, but she'll kind of like just do that turn. Teresa, no. I'm not going back up. And I think the personage here doesn't want me to. So 
Long way round it is for me. I hope I have some company along the way. But if I don't, I understand. You have to My, do what uh, you have to do. <laughs> I'm always fond of telling me time is money, right? Yes. You have told me that. So, I understand if I am to find my own way back. <sighs> so, I guess we... Oh God. boy, I don't know if you can hear it, but I mean like the storm, a storm has started outside. And it is really raining down. Okay, so, no, I can't hear it. No. Okay, yeah, no, it's that's. I'm just finding it funny because it's like we were out in that heat earlier today, oh. and it was just like, oh, the sun's beating down, the humidity's like smacking you in the face, and then now I hear <laughs> a thunderstorm outside. Yep, it was ready. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's relatively plain sailing, right, uh, to to the other side. I think mm -hmm. there is something like a natural fissure on the other side that makes it a, a rough track, but not not as arduous as that to get into the city. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I wonder if we just introduce the city and then okay kind of close there for next week sure um so yeah we have this you know in terms of everything we've seen before sprawling metropolis right um but i think the the thing that strikes you is just how you know, unbalanced the city is when you finally lay your eyes on it. You know, there are so many towers here which are incredibly high. And then the rest of the city is, you know, these small, mostly one, but sometimes maybe two story houses um, jammed into the space in between these towers. It is really like the division between society is so obvious here. You know, if you are if you are important, you are in the tower. If you're not, you are in the dust. And to get into the city, there is a toll. And it seems like for every pilgrim, maybe maybe some who have uh, who've been paid by Teresius, mm. you know, they they are left with something when they get into the city. But for anyone else, um, they are giving away heirlooms. They're giving away whatever else they had saved. They're giving away everything for a chance at safety within these walls. Interesting. I... I was at the cloister. I didn't realize. I don't think I have anything for them. They can take for the toll. And uh, Rhesius looks at you like almost like you're that one deadbeat friend who never <laughs> has the money. <laughs> and uh. he just pays for you without a second thought. Um, uh, you don't you, you don't think there's any like judgment like what was he expecting of course uh of course wall wouldn't uh have 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 the money 
Um, I will pay you back, Theresius. I just need to find some gainful employment. No. Um, so yeah, I wonder what is it what is it about this city that seems um, I guess on the one hand this kind of the pure possibilities here the kind of freedom that you would have to do whatever it is you want um, and the, on the other hand the kind of the lack of comfort or familiarity that really almost makes you wish you were back in the cloister. Oh yeah. I mean just just the look of all those towers just almost almost made Wall turn tail and run back even towards the stairs. But no, no. I mean, you know, that was just kind of like a shock to her system where it was like just like kind of like this jolt that runs through her spine upon seeing this and then looking up up and up but then she realizes that's silly she's just gonna have to make her way this is the price this is the price you pay when you leave the safety perhaps or comfort of home and yeah. Again, this is where she reassures Theresius. It's like I do mean to pay you back. I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't think. Do you know of anyone that could use a worn-out scribe? I think you'll find a lot of people here who uh, who will make you a cornerstone of their sharp practice. Their sharp sharp practice, you know, uh, cutting corners, finding angles. You mean cheating? I wouldn't like to call it cheating, but an honest day's pay for a dishonest day's work, right? Okay. I've never tried, but I mean, try anything once, right? And she will actually, like, kind of look, look down, and then look underneath her lashes at him and say, If I did, would you think any less of me? Ask me when you paid me back, huh? <laughs> okay. Sure. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, you will, uh, maybe they have an inn or something like that where they regularly stay before they sell on the goods. Okay. Um, and, you know, may maybe you'll stop there for a bite to eat or a drink before you go look at knocking on doors, looking for gainful, uh, employment. Mm -hmm. on some end of the legal spectrum right <laughs> um, okay. okay so i think Fair. that's where we'll pick it up next time okay uh so let me stop the recording and we will do our debrief okay